All right, here we are again. We're Carlos Sanchantel, and today is my turn to interview Chantel, and we get to learn a little bit about her story growing up. And it is with my with an on it is very honoring my privilege to uh, be able to <laughs> ask questions of my best friend, my soulmate, my queen, Chantel. Awesome. Thanks for being here today, Chantel. <laughs> Well, let's start with um, your early life, your childhood. Tell us a little bit about where you were born, what that was like growing up in your family. Mm -hmm. All right. So I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, my family was Mormon. My parents came from Germany. They came over on their honeymoon and... Uh, with the intention of being in Salt Lake for a year and they decided to stay. And so um, I'm the youngest of five. I have one brother um, who was actually adopted, um, but uh, so he's second in line. So we have um, Michelle's the oldest and then Mario, Robin, Christy and myself. Um, there's six years between Christy and I, and um, <clears throat> that was probably, you know, the biggest challenge that I faced as a really young child was the fact that she was really mad that I was born. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we grew up in, uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah, and um, my childhood was amazing outside of, you know, the sister that, that didn't, you know. And why didn't she, like, what was that about? was she the baby or something or? yeah well she was the youngest and then okay. and then I was born so she was six years old and then you know kind of took her light if you will and what made you feel like she didn't like you like what were some of the funny stories that this <laughs> <took place? laughs> oh gosh there was a lot um you know early on my oldest sisters because there was such a, a big age gap right? They, you know, would carry me around. They were obsessed with me. They wanted to pretend that I was their baby. And, you know, I kind of came into the world um, with the sunshine girl um, thing. And so, you know, she just, she resented that deeply. And, um, you know, it was like one of those things where she felt like I got away with everything. I was like, you know, daddy's girl. And, <laughs> We pull up to a gas station and <clears throat> I'd hop out of the car and go in with my dad and Christy would be like, watch this. Right. And I'd come back with snacks or, you know, I mean, so it was just like those kind of things all yeah. over the place. Um, you know, she felt like I always got her in trouble, which um, perception is everything. So, you know, I kind of felt like I was totally picked on and she she was just mean to me and her friends would jump in on it too so it was kind of like always so you know we uh I, I grew up on three acres and it was a beautiful property beautiful property um so you know my favorite memories were sleeping on the trampoline I you know my safe place you know when I was being tortured by her and her friends was to climb a tree there was one tree in particular that you could find me in if <laughs> if uh she was babysitting for some reason or um she didn't climb trees obviously or she just never knew i was there she left oh it was your hiding place, <laughs> <I> think. <laughs> hiding place. how tall was it? do you remember like it was a pine tree like? oh the pine tree oh it was, okay. a, it was a, that's different it was a pine tree i don't know what kind of pine but right um and then I spent a lot of time, uh, my dad had irrigation ditches to water the property mm -hmm. and, and I spent a lot of time hanging out in the irrigation dish ditches, catching pollywogs and, um, I loved that. It was, would just, you say most of your childhood didn't have like friendships then it was mainly you and the animals? <clears> or you? No, I had friendships. I mean, yeah, I went to a private school. Um, yeah, I was wondering about that. I don't know that I knew that. What where you went to school when you're little? Yeah, so my my birthday is in September, so I missed the the cutoff, 
And so instead of having me wait a year to start kindergarten, my mom started me right away in a, in a local private school called Challenger. And so I didn't go to the neighborhood school that all the kids okay. went to, but um, because we were in the church, I had friends that were in the neighborhood. Gotcha. Um, and then a couple of them actually went to school with me as well at Challenger. And so, yeah, no, I had friendships and <clears throat> I actually, you know, I had a, my best friend, Eric Pedley was, lived, there was a horse farm right next door and he, his mom, his mom was a single mom and she was a flight attendant. And so I would hop the fence and go to their house and he would hop the fence and come to my house and we would actually hop on the horses and ride them bareback. And oh, cool. Wow. But when his mom was doing long flights and whatnot, he would stay with us. I also had Ryan, my nephew. Okay. So my oldest sister um, had Ryan really early. So he was three years younger than me. And so there were seasons when he would stay with us or live with us, you know. And um, so he was kind of like my little brother, right? Yeah. I would torture him. <laughs> <laughs> and pay it forward. <laughs> yeah, I I definitely gave him some good scares. I would always, you know, run around the corner first and then jump out at him and you know, those kind of things. Yeah. And you guys had a pond there, right? We did. Some mm -hmm. We had a, a really pond. big man-made pond. We had a, a big rope that we would swing into. And then during the winter time, my dad would take the tra tractor on it and um, clear it so we could ice skate. So I started ice skating real young. I also learned how to snow ski real young because we had a nice hill on the property. And we lived, we lived at the mouth of the canyon of Snowbird in uh cool. in utah nice well so what are like some of your memories from then maybe <clears throat> the good ones that are fun you just said some of those but were there some family dynamics that were challenging or how was it with your mom and dad like what, what was that environment like yeah um for me again my my childhood was so good like i you know maybe was ob oblivious to anything that was happening with my mom and dad. They, I, my mom uh, actually got breast cancer mm. when I was real little, um, but I, I don't have any recollection of that. I was the youngest, right? And so, um, like for us, you know, family trips were consistent. We went to Lake Powell once or twice a year and then, I remember I was, you know, one of the, my favorite memories was I was five years old and mom sat me down and said, Hey, you know, so we were talking and, and we wanted to propose to you kids, you know, what you want to do for, for Christmas. Do we want to have a normal Christmas or do we want to do a vacation wow. and just get one gift? And so we all opted for the vacation and we decided to go down to Mexico, San Felipe, Mexico. And so that started at five years old and it went for about five years, four or five years. Um, and our first, our first time down there, um, you know, we pulled into town and, and had dinner and we were going to go camp out in the desert. So not at the campground by the beach, but in the desert. And we were driving out this dirt road and <clears throat> of course, you know, we've got a car full of kids and my dad had an international scout. I don't know if you know what that is. The vehicle kind of like a bronco but yeah yeah, yeah. anyways uh you know there's this guy walking down the road you know carrying a bottle and swaying <laughs> back and forth and of course my dad goes shall we pick him up and everybody's <laughs> like no and, and he did <laughs> so this drunk guy gets in you know this drunk mexican and and we're like oh my gosh and so anyways um he led us to where his family was and we pulled up now, mind you, before we took this trip, we had we had a big trailer. We had some um, three wheelers in it, motorcycle, and then we went around the neighborhood and collected all like old clothes, you know, furnishings, anything that the neighborhood didn't want. So we had all that in the trailer, and so we pull up, you know, to this literal cardboard shack mm -hmm. that. Wow. It was lined with kids. There's a baby, you know, just licking off of a plate on the ground. I mean, it's literally cardboard. And we 
<clears throat> with the broken Spanish that my dad knew, you know, we kind of tried to communicate a little bit and, and we decided to unload our trailer there. Wow. And um, <clears throat> the gentleman's name was Alejandro. I don't remember his wife's name, but, um, you know, we built relationship with that family. And as a five-year-old kid, it, it really, I don't know, it imprinted something really deep in me. And so I remember, you know, that week. So that was the beginning of our trip. And then yeah. that week we would see different people with like yeah. different items of clothing because they would sell it and whatnot. Um, so anyways, we, we continue to bless that family uh, yearly. Mm. And we got to see... So Alejandro got cirrhosis of the liver and he got real sick. Wow. So he quit drinking, but we also got to see their cardboard shack transition to a brick home. Um, of course they had more kids, but um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty profound <clears throat> experience for me in that. And so we stopped doing Christmas as normal and okay. that was what we did. So. And that became the like the family tradition. For, yeah, so for shrimp tacos and riding three wheelers down in Mexico became the no family. video back then. No, uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> no shrimp tacos was definitely it. You know, it was it was the thing. Interesting. So um, <clears throat> during that time frame too, did you like play sports or were you in music or theater? Because that would be five to ten years old. Yeah. So I was. I was the kid who would like line my family up on the couch and <laughs> sing and dance for them, perform, right? right? So in first grade, I was, I was what, six? Um, I played Dorothy <laughs> in The Wizard of Oz. You were how old? You said? Six. Oh, six. Okay. Yeah, so it was been about that same time. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I loved that. But. And that, was that for one or two years or you don't remember? There was school plays, but that was, that was one year. And then when did Mario, your brother, show up? Because he was adopted, right? When did he show up? Yeah, like, when did they adopt him? How when he was, old were you? After he was born. No, but how, oh, right when he was born. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so you were, a, you were, yeah, that was before you came. He was just yeah. always my brother. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you grew up always knowing him. Yeah. So my mom had a plan of having a child every two years. And at the two-year mark after having Michelle, um, she didn't get pregnant and so you know she had some friends who were adopting kids and um <clears throat> she was like oh i'll just adopt and so they started going through the adoption process and and then she got pregnant um mm -hmm. and she was a little worried because she didn't want to tell my dad that she was pregnant but then she did and he was like well okay and so robin and mario are very close in age they're 10 months apart i think hmm. so gotcha. so my mom had three kids under three, under the age of three. It was like she had <laughs> twins. Yeah. For triplets. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. So no sports though, really, during that time in Utah? No. Mm -hmm. Just the theater. Yeah. Okay. You didn't get Just involved school in- school plays. Yeah, school plays. That's right. School that was plays. It. Did you get involved in any kind of gymnastics? Well, so no, I didn't do gymnastics or anything, but our family did do dance. So we did okay. international junior folk dance. Um, also ballet. I had, um, we had a real strict, stern um, German teacher. <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah, I guess we did, we did perform at um, Oktoberfest and we actually did a trip to Germany and I was the youngest international junior folk dancer of that group. <laughs> Do you remember how old you were? Yeah, I was about six. Oh, all and, that, man, yeah. that was a busy, busy year. You went to Mexico. <laughs> Kind of all that time frame. Wow. Yeah. Started getting involved and in doing more traveling. That's pretty amazing. Cool. So then uh, when did the move happen? Or also was it during that time of your five to 10 year old? When did you move to California? When did that all <clears> I was place? 10. So, so you were 10. So that, that makes sense. Um, but also while you're in that, those formative years, five to 10, did your parents do some of the, the um, like, healing work and kind of personal growth and development mm -hmm. stuff when did that start happening or was that more in california no 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 it was definitely utah so oh, okay. it was still young i was still like five okay because i remember five to ten was probably 
those years where my parents were facilitators for the good life, um, which was a personal growth and development. Um, wow. Company. Epic your life. <laughs> yeah. The good life. It's the grown up. <laughs> it's the, that's interesting. I didn't even, I don't know why I missed that part, but the good life. Okay. Yeah. They're doing a lot. So of they were they were working, uh, you know, with a lot of people. My mom became a hypnotherapist, and so she was, you know, very much involved with, you know, personal growth and healing yeah. practices, right? And uh, so I, you know, and they would hold courses at our home. Um, and at that point, you know, because Christy was a teenager, and she kind of, you know, it, I was really it in that sense down there, and then. Um, you know, Michelle had moved out, then pretty soon Robin moved out. And I did feel like a good sense of abandonment from that. You know, if I look back, I'm like, because I was so close, like they were like, the so adoring. Show. They took care of you too. Right? And then, and then when they moved out, it was like, wait, where'd you go? <laughs> and then uh, it was, I was eight years old when Mario went on his mission. So then another like Personally, loss yeah. for me in that sense. And and I think I felt it so much because mm -hmm. there was so much animosity with Christy that that then it was like, who's left with me? Yeah, you know what I sure. mean. Yeah, yeah. And so I definitely, I definitely remember feeling that. But um, there, there, it became there, there became a lot of turmoil uh, around that time. I I remember phone calls. You know, mom was on the phone or dad was on the phone with the IRS things started getting real, real, uh, tumultuous a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I think my dad made a bad business deal and lost a lot of money and had something had to do with taxes and they were going to take our house. So, you know, mm -hmm. obviously I, right. as a From kid, you don't have right. a full comprehension or understanding, but you could feel it in the yeah. air. You could yeah. feel all of that. And so, um, that was what facilitated the move to California. Um, every time we were driving to Mexico, we would go through Escondido. Hmm. Hmm. And Escondido means beautiful hidden valley in Spanish. And so they were just drawn to that and <clears throat> just ready, I guess, for a move. And we had a big property and big home. And so, you know, we had it on the market. They ended up selling it for pennies. Hmm. Um, my, my, they built that home just before I was born. So that was a big loss too. Yeah. It was, sure. so there was, I think my parents took a lot of hits during that time. And then, uh, and so then you moved to California at 10, right? Yeah. Before but, you moved to California, I want to ask what, with that personal growth and development stuff, like what was some of your favorite parts? Cause I think it leads to why we do what we do now. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would always come in at like at the end with all the, the love and the healing <laughs> moments, right. After they've worked through their shit. And got to the, the good stuff. <laughs> the good stuff. I would come in and be able to, you know, participate in all of the the love. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, part for sure. Feel good girl. Come yeah. In, but part. Yeah, my mom always talks about that. How I love that, was your that favorite part. part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So now you're ten. Yeah. So, you're but before before we moved to California, right. um, my dad wanted a sailboat, and oh, um, let's see. yeah. So he had he had found this boat. <clears throat> that it was like a his dream boat well it it was in magazines and whatnot and then somehow in transport it fell off a trailer and the whole side was destroyed so he got it at a really good price and so he started working on a sailboat in utah and then so that was all kind of and that made the move with you to california during the time so. yeah and so when we when we were moving to California, he uh, he went ahead of time, rented a place, got a lab. He's, he's a dental technician. And so he got a lab set up and, um, and then we moved. Um, the boat did go too, and he steadily worked on it for another five years. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? that was kind of because the whole problems. side was destroyed. Mm -hmm. It was, um, yeah, so it became... But his his ultimate goal with the sailboat was that he wanted to go sail around the world. So there's that. Um, so we moved to California and I started school March of my fifth grade year. 
So you went to private school all the way up to then? Mm -hmm. Until you moved? Okay. Now you now this was public school? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So now that's almost junior high. Not quite junior high. Is it 10 years old? No. no. Sixth yeah. grade was Sixth grade, high. yeah. So some schools it is, but how was that? Now new school, different, I would say probably even different environment. Utah with the being Mormon and raised Mormon, like more of a family. Yeah, so at that now, point, we now were you go to Cali. We were still part of the Mormon community and, and church um, in Escondido. Okay. Um, for another few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my dad set up his dental lab and we then bought a house. Um, he continued to work on the sailboat. I did junior high um, in Escondido. I went to probably one of the, the ghettoest <laughs> so you went schools. From private school to nice, nice city school in California. Escondido. Yeah. So <laughs> my brother wrestled in high school. Okay. okay? So <laughs> we wrestled a lot. Oh, he would okay. teach you practice the moves. <laughs> he said he was teaching. He's like, let me practice. No, he genuinely actually it was more for like self defense. You know, with um, Christy. Well, that's cool. <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> to be honest, is that where you learned how to wrestle and fight? I didn't realize. That. Yeah, Mario. She's she's savage. <laughs> so, anyways, so I get well. I go to Grant Middle School. It's not even called that anymore because it was so ghetto. But at Grant Middle School, there was three rival gangs, uh, Mexican gangs. You're like 13 by now or 12 or something. Well, sixth grade would have been like 11, 12. Okay. So this is when you first got there pretty close. <clears throat> first couple of years. Going to yeah. So, okay. you know, I remember in sixth grade, I had a girl who tried to beat me up in the bathroom and didn't really work very well. <laughs> Country girl. Um. And then we'll survive. <laughs> in seventh grade, we had this really big group of white friends, and we had a big, big group of Mexican friends, and all of us were kind of friends. And then, but there was a couple that we didn't really know in the midst of it. And one day, I was hanging out at um, a buddy's house down the road, and this girl comes up, and it was her. She had to get in a fight. Her initiation to get initiate into a game. Ah, that's right. And so she chose me, and I kicked her ass. <laughs> she picked the wrong white girl. So it was interesting because, you know, after that, everybody's like, "Hey, Chantel, will you jump in." You know, everybody's got these fights <laughs> that are happening. Back. Yeah, and I'd be like, "Nah, I'm cool." But here's my rings. <laughs> no, <I'm> just... <laughs> but um, it was it was interesting because from that point on. Nobody messed with me. No, I didn't. Either. I didn't have you any. Known for being a in fire. fact, I was actually brought in by the administration of the school yeah. to be a mediator. So anytime there was some, it was it was called a peer mediator. So anytime there was a rumbling of like there was a potential of a fight, they would call me in and the two people, and I would mediate the fight. Wow! So it peer was mediator. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah, it was interesting. Nice. Um, how that transitioned um, and it just you know I guess it's interesting how it just kind of evolved the teachers must have saw something in you but again knowing your background your mom and dad being in that whole world of a good life and personal growth and development and then your brother teaching you how to defend yourself good head on your shoulders I guess you just became the one that was the go-to yeah for help for mediation wow okay Cool. And that, then what happened? Like you're a teenager, you're not playing sports still. Were you surfing yet? Like, I know that's a big part of your life, but where did yeah, that come so, in? So, okay. So, you know, once dad got the boat to a place where he could put it in the harbor, he did. And then was just doing the work on the inside. And so he, he put it in Oceanside Harbor. And so I would go... I would roller skate around the harbor and, and, you know, he had a little dinghy and I would cruise around in the harbor and look at the names of the boats and stuff. So that was always kind of like a fun thing yeah. as far as the boat goes. Um, but, and I did start surfing a little bit. Who, who taught you back then? 
Mm. You remember where that all came up? I could have taught myself. It was yeah. it was kind of like I just wanted to do it, and oh. so you didn't even have friends that really pursued did. it. Well, I had friends that were you know surfing or boogie boarding and whatnot, <clears throat> but at that point we were all kind of just learning. Yeah. You know what I mean. And when did uh, <clears throat> could you used to go to Arizona for summer trips or something? When was that all taking place? What are you talking about? Lake or not Arizona? Um, Lake Powell. Lake Powell, yeah. yeah. I hear those stories all the time. What's the, when was that? That was from birth. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So even while you were in Utah. Oh, yeah, mostly do, Utah. And what what we, was that? Because that was pretty fun family trips. I always hear a lot of stories about that. Yeah, I I said that. that but I mean, you, used but to go you were twice a year. Okay, so twice a year, yeah. So that was the boat. When we trip. lived in Utah, okay. we went twice a year. It and had nothing to do boat, with that. Right? No, we had a we had a timeshare on a houseboat. A houseboat. That's right. Okay. And we also had a motorboat yeah. during those years. We went yeah. to to Lake Powell, so we had so many family trips, family with family friends. Um, you know, grew up water skiing, hydro sliding. Because yeah. your mom and dad both are pretty extreme like that, sports, athletic. Like they in met, Germany, they, they met in a gym club, uh, yeah. a sports gym club. Yeah, in Germany, right? My dad had um, one of those pommel horses. He was a gymnast. Oh yeah, he had super crazy on our Sorry. property. He had um, a set of rings set up, and he would do the rings. Yeah, that's crazy. So then, did that continue on even when you went to California? Do you remember? Not really. Lake Powell kind of stopped. What about Mexico? Yeah, that stuff too. So it kind of almost seems like then your dad's focus turned to the boat, to the water, mm -hmm. and then yours turned to the water too. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, but you weren't playing sports this time either. So eighth grade, I did, I did some track. Okay. Um, and so my oldest sister, Michelle held the state record in Utah for hurdles okay. until she um, ended up pregnant. <laughs> so gotcha. uh, her kind of, her, her dreams went, you know, as far as competing um, went down with that in, in track. But so she would work with me um, okay. cool. during track. But then my freshman year, I started playing soccer. Nice. Also did track there too, um, but it was halfway through um, the soccer season when my dad decided, well, was ready to head out on his trip. So I was 14 years old. When he left. And when you say on his trip, he had the boat and what was his goal? To sail around the world. Sail around the world. So he just left. Yeah, so um, the idea was that he would go and that my mom and I would meet him in Bali um, and spend some time with him there. But that, yeah. And so he he started off with a, a I don't think it was, the dude was like a Russian or something who went with him like down through Mexico and then jumped ship. So. Um, he started out with a guy gotcha and then ended up alone okay as he went and his college. target was literally just to take this and how, how big is this boat again 27 foot so a 27 foot boat and sail through all the big oceans and <laughs> everything all, all the oceans and sail all the way around the world yeah that's pretty crazy yeah yeah, so uh, that was part of the, probably the 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 hardest season for me. Yeah. Um, because I was so close with my dad. Uh, you know, he was the adventure guy. You know, at Lake Powell, we would do hikes, and you know, Mexico was again. He was he was the adventure guy, and that I loved He's your that hero <laughs> essentially. In that and time. um, you know. I think mom kind of was forced to be the bad guy somewhat yeah. in that sense. So that was my reality at 14 years old was that I was losing my everything. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of press with him leaving. They had cameras and the newspapers and all of these things. So it was like this big deal. And there's a picture of me just standing on the dock when he was taken off. I know. Um, 
The world crashed. So, uh, here my mom, who had zero career, zero anything. She had been a housewife her whole life, right, here in the States. Um, she had to get minimum wage jobs to support us, and we left her with IRS debt that was tremendous, and... <laughs> a very angry 14 year old and uh, she would drop me off at school and go sit on the beach and wail but I never saw it I had no idea the depth of what she dealt with and it later came out uh, there was a CNN uh, interview that they had got a hold of my dad and there he is with a girlfriend on live yeah. TV. Yeah. And uh, so I had no idea the, the many affairs he had until after he left, but there was a number of them. There was, there was a lot. So it was, you know, there was more and more after he left, there was so much revealing about, you know, what their reality was. And, um, I, so it just caused my anger to grow more yeah. and more, right? And then, you know, I uh, I would write him hateful letters. I Surfing saved my life, right? Like, I was just, I was depressed. I was angry. And in Escondido, you know, everybody's experimenting with crystal meth and you know, whatever, and I just, all I wanted to do was be at the beach. Yeah. Um, so it kept you away from the drugs, but essentially that was your... It was my escape. Yeah. It was where I coped. The water. Um, the waves. Yeah. So I would ditch school and surf. That's all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then I started working, because I also, if I wanted makeup, if I wanted, you know, clothes... Sure. Mm -hmm. My mom was doing her best to provide our house and food. And, you know, she talks about, you know, during that season, we would go to Rubio's and have fish tacos. And she'd give me the taco and she'd eat the beans and rice. Mm -hmm. That was our treat, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, then it was, it was interesting because, uh, the church all of a sudden felt very awkward mm -hmm. um, when they decided to divorce. Yeah. And uh, so we felt that very, very deeply. And uh, so stopped. Yeah. So now you're, you're working your mom's working and then what like you you didn't graduate high school at that time you, <laughs> no. uh, you kind of dropped out I went to several different high schools right mm -hmm. so at the time we were trying to mom was trying to move me to the beach so that I could get out and be where I wanted to be and um so we tried, uh, I first went to a school in Encinitas, California. So I left Escondido High School and went to, to San Diego High School for a season, for, I think my sophomore year. And then I came back to Escondido shortly. And then that's when Michelle and, and her husband at the time, Dick, bought our home from us. Gotcha. And we then moved to Cap Carlsbad. <clears throat> Went to Carlsbad High School and hated it because then it was just rich kids whose parents buy their drugs and their cars and I just didn't fit in. Like I just had no, I had no desire to connect with anybody there. And yeah. so 
I ended up, and because I had ditched so much school, I had no <laughs> credits. So I ended up at the um, alternative school or something. The alternative yeah. continuation <laughs> school. Yeah. And uh, so I was there, which, you know, that's where I met one of my lifelong friends, Molly. I'm grateful for that. Um, but I, you know, even still, I was just angry and I just didn't want to be there. And uh, I had an English teacher who just challenged me and I tried to get out of her class and they said I couldn't. I said, well, what do I need to do? And so then my option was either the GED or the California High School Proficiency Test, and which in the state of California is recognized as a diploma. So that looked like the better route. And so that's what I did. I took the test, got out of high school and went to work. Even more. <laughs> so, okay, at this time you're about 17? 16. 16. Got my first tattoo. <laughs> Worked at a donut shop. It was- That's kind of work you were doing. The beach. Serving. Donut. Yeah, well. I started at an Italian restaurant, but then I got a job at Vivi's Bakery. was a really well-known surf environment in Cardiff Beach. Uh, it was um, it was a cool spot, and so I was a donut girl there. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened? Like, what did you keep working at the donut shop? Did you 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 and your mom live together still by mm -hmm. the beach? Is that yeah what was going on there? Yeah. So I was taking the bus to work I was surfing and uh, yeah just doing life and trying to survive um but my mom had also met Phil oh, okay during this time okay so she met Phil I was 16 and um he was a surfer and he loves turtles. <laughs> so for a 16 year old girl who loved turtles and surfed, that was exactly what I needed. Yeah. And he came in and he loved me well. I got my first car. He had <laughs> the a tool box <laughs> in my trunk with anything that I needed, as well as triple a so that if i broke down i would be covered um he made sure that he just made sure that we were taken care of That's he awesome. paid off the irs debt for my mom for my dad actually <laughs> yeah and um he was amazing and uh you know it wasn't easy because i was a angry teenager yeah and uh He just loved me well. Yeah. Wow. Phil. What a blessing. So then that was you were about when did they get married or get together, your mom and Phil? Yeah, so uh they weren't together too long before they got married. Like it was around sixteen. Okay. 16, almost seventeen. Gotcha. They got married in February. So yeah, just before I turned seventeen. But he kind of definitely pulled you through that dark time. Brought back hope a little bit. Well, he supported my mom so <laughs> yeah. that I could do my thing too. And, yeah. you know, in the midst of that, um, really because my mom's a hypnothera hypnotherapist, right? Like she, I was taught early on to <clears throat> work through stuff. Yeah. I was, I was groomed that way. I was groomed that when we have these deep feelings or emotions and challenges or trauma that that we don't have to let them control us yeah you know what i mean and so i'm so grateful for that example and i'm so grateful for her ability to separate what i was going through and what she was going through yeah, for sure. she never talked bad about my dad she never i mean hmm. i probably hear more now than i ever <laughs> did as a teenager because she was very Same. unreal it's it's unreal to me that I didn't I heard stuff from my sisters I heard the trash talk from my sisters right, right? I heard the all the wrongs 
from my sisters, but it, it never came from my mom. Yeah. So then you went. To, uh, well, I was what, so I was actively yeah. So because actually working on it because I was actively working on it and working on it with my mom, you know, towards healing, towards forgiveness, right? Like because again, knowing that it's not healthy to hold on to stuff and the anger just destroys you um I you know so then it was like coming to a point where I was turning 18 and I was like what am I going to do with my life yeah right am I just going to be a beach bum for the rest (laughs) of my life and that's literally what my mom thought I was going to (laughs) do she she was like nope she's going to be a beach bum (laughs) and um so at the time uh my dad so the girlfriend that he had met in Tahiti um, remained with him. And so he ended up in Guam uh, and he was in Guam for about five years because it's the last island on the Pacific that's U.S. territory. So as a dental technician, he was able to work. Right. Um, and so at that point, I, you know, I was still sending him angry letters and, you know, he would reach out occasionally. Um, and so, you know, he, he would ask, you know, would you be willing to come? And so by the time I was 18 years old, I felt like I had done enough work to be willing, yeah, willing to go and willing to face him, to ask him hard questions and to pursue forgiveness. Like that was, that was my desire. And I was kind of at a crossroads in my age, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that in between from teenager to adulthood, I felt like it was like, I got to do this now Yeah. before I start anything like regards to my future or whatever. So I went over there and I was in, my intention was to be there for like one or two months. Wow. Okay. Um, I took my surfboard, which was dumb but I didn't know that then. Um, So I took my surfboard and thought I was just going to go surf on the island. And, but the reality is, is Guam is coral. The island is coral. And so the reef is really dangerous. There was only one beach break on the island, which was where all of the sewage runoff went out. So I wasn't surfing there. Um, So it kind of became a little bit of a miserable like feeling for me because I wasn't able to surf there. Um, but I lived also on the sailboat with my dad and his new girlfriend, which was a huge challenge as an 18 year old who still had a lot of like anger, yeah. you know, especially now you have his mistress for sure on board. So you're now 18 mm-hmm. and you're, you've moved to Guam and you're supposed to be there one, two months. And this is where we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to hear the story of what it was like to be in Guam. And then we'll keep going to that, how we met, because there's a few years still. This is really good. I love you. Thank you for sharing, being real and vulnerable. So we'll be back. <laughs> 